get into that meditating on the Word of God, I went uh, to uh, look at that first scripture verse, which is uh, found in uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. I'm using, I, like, I like to use the Amplified Bible because it amplifies itself. No, just only because it's, it, it says sometimes a lot of words, but I like it because it, it, it gives a lot of the Greek words. It gives us understanding. Okay? And it says, let's, let's read it. Not that I have now attained this idea or have already been made perfect, but I press on to hold, to lay hold of, grasp, and make my own that for which Christ Jesus the Messiah has laid hold of me and made me his own. Okay? The King James says apprehend. Okay? So what it's saying is I want to lay hold of why he laid hold of me. That's what the scripture verse is saying. Why did Jesus lay hold of you? Why did Jesus pay the price for you? Why did he call you out? See, that, that's what I, I want to find out. I want to find out that out for myself. And you want to want to find that out for yourself. And so I want to lay hold of why he laid hold of me. Why he stopped me. Why when I was going nowhere. Why when I was going astray. Why while, while I was headed to hell, why did he stop me? Why did he apprehend me? Why did he capture me? Why, 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 why? Why did he do that? For what purpose? I, I want to know the purpose of that. Okay? And, and so, uh, let's go over to um, um, Proverbs chapter 23. We're going to come back to that um, Philippians shortly. And it says this. All right, let's read it. For I, I just want to read the first half of it. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Okay? So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Okay? So that's why it's important for you to put good things in your heart, amen, so that then what happens is that then it can come and you can start thinking that way in line with who you are, okay? So as a man thinks, so is he, okay? So the reason that you are the way you are is because how you think. Because how you think then turns around and, and, it, and it, what it does, it, it equals into what you believe because what you think is what you believe. It's what you consider. And so what happens is that's why we need to get have good thoughts. That's why the Word of God is so important because what it does is it causes us to have good thoughts. It tells us what to think on. Okay? It says think on these things. Because what happens is we've been so programmed to think contrary to the Word of God. And that's why we need to be reprogrammed. That's why the Word of God says, you know, the renewing of our minds. Okay? So we can truly offer, you know, people say, oh, I offer up my body to the Lord. But unless you renew your mind, you really can't offer your body unto the Lord. Because it takes you to renew your mind so then you can tell your body to line up with what the Word of God is saying. So you can do the things of God. If you don't renew your mind, you'll stay a baby all the, way, all the time. Someone will have to always take care of you. Someone will have to tell you what to do. And that's what happens to a lot of Christians is we're still in the infantile state. We haven't grown. We haven't matured. We haven't grown in Christ. See, but that's what we do. Christ has to be learned. And that's what uh, uh, Ephesians 4.20 says, is that Christ needs to be learned, so we need to learn how to be. Amen? So we can be. Unless you learn to be, you can't be. Though you are. Amen? Because we are that already, but what happens is that we can't be that until we begin to learn to be who we are. Once you learn how to be, then it's easy. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's almost like uh, uh, going to grade school. Okay? There's, there's kindergarten, there's first grade, and a lot of times we're still in first grade. All right? and, you, and you know how it is. If, if you were like 16 years old in first grade, it'd be kind of like embarrassing. I, I, I know when I went to school, so sometimes when people would come from different countries, you know, because they didn't know the language, they would be older, but they would actually put them in, in, in a lower grade, and sometimes they did it just because that's how they did it, not that it was fair, okay? But that's just how they did it. So you'd be going to school, and there'd be older kids in your class, 
And sooner or later they would catch up and then they would, they would skip them and move them on to their right, the class that they belonged to as far as age was concerned. But we see that the body of Christ, everything has, has progressed, knowledge has increased, and a lot of things have increased. But if you look at the body of Christ, in the natural, it hasn't increased. As far as technology has increased. We're still kind of like behind, and not behind in the times, but behind in our development of who we are in Christ. And the reason for that is because we've listened to tradition, we've listened to uh, 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 opinions, you know, we've listened to other things other than the Word of God, because the Word of God is true. Okay? You know, a lot of people have opinions, and opinions are good, but they're always subjective. They're not the truth. People have facts. Facts aren't the truth. Okay? Jesus didn't say it's the facts that will set you free. Did he say that? No. no he said what was going to set you free? Truth. The truth. The truth is going to set you free, not facts. Because facts are just opinions that people have come up and said, well, this is a fact. Okay? Well, we don't want to argue with that might be the fact, but it's not the truth. Okay? You know, people say, well, the fact of the matter is. Well, that's just an opinion. Okay? I want the truth. And God's word is true. In fact, God's word is not only true, it's absolute reality. Amen. Okay? Absolute reality. So when people say, oh, you know, you need to get real, well, that means, oh, then you, you're, you're saying that we all need to be a Christian because that's what getting real is all about. Because that's absolute reality. All right? So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let's go with, I want you to go to, uh, with me to uh, Joshua, chapter 1. And, and Pastor talked about, you know, he and Joshua is following probably the, the greatest deliverer, the greatest, one of the greatest prophets that ever lived, called Moses. And he has to follow in Moses' footsteps. All right? Not a small matter. You know, when you have to follow somebody else's footsteps, let's say he had an older brother, and that older brother was, was real smart and, and a great athlete, and then all of a sudden you're coming behind and everybody's looking at you and they're expecting the same thing, if not more from you. And a lot of times it's like, well, I'm not my brother. <laughs> but, you know, the, there, there was a, here Joshua is following in Moses' footsteps. All right? And God begins to instruct Joshua, and he's going to say, Joshua, look, this is a way you're going to be able to accomplish even what Moses didn't accomplish because Moses wasn't able to bring them into the promised land, as we know. Okay, So now Joshua has to take this wild bunch of people and help them and, in, and lead them to the promised land. And he says this, let's read it. Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. And verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Hold up right there. Shall not depart out of your what? Mouth. Your mouth. That means you ought to be constantly saying that. Amen? Don't let it out of your mouth. Don't. And he says what to have in your mouth. He doesn't say just say anything. He says have what in the mouth? The book of the law. The book of the law or the word of God. Okay? The word of God. Okay? But you shall what? Meditate, Meditate on it. When? Day and night. Day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. See, unless you meditate, because what meditation does is meditate brings it down into the core. It makes it a reality on the inside of you. You know, one of the things that happened is when meditation first came, not first came out, but when they started talking about meditating, the Christians backed away from meditation because they thought it was some Eastern philosophy. And then they said, oh, no, meditates, meditation is bad. I don't know what you Remember that, but you know, I've been a Christian for over 40 years, so I remember that. All right? And what happens is it's, it's, it seems like everything good that comes out, Christians are fearful of it. You know what I mean? But we don't have to be fearful of anything. You know, the other day the Spirit of God told me, He said, Listen, no weapon formed against you can prosper. And I said, Okay. And He said, No, no weapon formed against you can prosper. I said, Oh, okay. 
He said, this way, and the reason I say that to you is so that you don't have to worry about anything. Why should you worry about what people are saying or not saying? Why should you worry about if this is happening here and this is happening over there and, and this thing is coming and this other thing is coming? He said, why should you worry about that if no weapon that is formed against you can prosper? Amen. You want to be at peace. That's right. Regardless of what the news said. Regardless of what the media says. Regardless of what people are saying. Regardless of, of, of what the enemy might be saying, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Period. That's what God said. Amen. 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 And what we need to do is we need to take that in and meditate on it so that it becomes a reality in our lives. So when I'm walking, I don't have to work, worry about where I'm walking at, where I'm going, because you know what? No weapon formed against me can prosper. Amen. Why should I be in fear? Amen. So he says, according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Then you're going to have it. When you meditate and when it becomes a reality on the inside, when it gets down to where they say, where the rubber meets the road. You know what? That's the only place in the Bible that talks about success, that the word success is used. The only place. Now, we know that it implies success because God is a God of success, but that's the only time in the Bible that that word success is being used. And it's used by when we begin to meditate on God's word. When we begin to say it over and 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 over again and again.